Welcome back to Pass the PE Exam. What if I could give you five key tips to help you pass the PE exam? Well, I'm not going to, but my guest is because he's better qualified to do so than me. In today's episode, I'll be speaking with Andrew Kenyon. Andrew is a licensed professional engineer and project manager at BGE. He's also the executive director of the Florida Civil Educators Foundation, or FCEF. And Andrew took the exam and passed it about a year ago, so it's pretty fresh. And I asked him to kind of think back and reflect on it and give us some feedback now that he's able to reflect for a year and give us some key tips that he can help you with. So with that, let's jump right in to pass the PE exam. So Andrew, thanks for joining us on Pass the PE Exam. Can you start off by just telling our subscribers here, what is it that you do? What 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 kind of engineer? What do you do in your field? I'm a I'm a project manager in land and site development. So at BGE, they differentiate land development being kind of single family homes and communities and things like that, and site development being industrial and commercial development, kind of more in that line. Um, so in my current role, I'm doing a little bit of both. As a project manager, my job is mainly about managing, you know, managing the projects, managing budget, managing managing scope, managing, you know, the invoicing and uh, and things like that. But I think uh, at least in my career right now, kind of wearing some more hats and being a bit of a, you know, because I, I do a lot of my construction plans still in, in the weeds. So I'm still doing a lot of the production and the designs and the calculation and the permitting. Our niche right now, I would say, or kind of our main market in Jacksonville has been a lot of industrial development. So a lot of spec warehouses and um, some built to suit warehouses and, and things like that. It's just been a big kind of growing sub market in Jacksonville just with the, you know, some of the investments in the, you know, the port and, you know, did a big dredging project and things like that recently. So, you know, at the beginning of the day, though, I think what what I do is, you know, we help our clients go from day one, hey, we bought this land, we don't have a survey, we take them from the survey to the due diligence to the, hopefully they did the due diligence with us before they bought the land, I guess, but you know, sometimes it doesn't work out like that. But, uh, you know, we help them from that to the conceptual and the planning phase, trying to understand what goals they're trying to accomplish, you know, get something conceptual laid out and then ultimately move to full construction drawings um, and contract document preparation so that we can get, you know, all the permits that we need and so that our client can, you know, execute on that plan to build that, you know, speculative warehouse or to, you know, we're doing some some dealership work, like some auto dealership work. So helping them get get online so they can get, you know, service started and get vehicles sold on the lot and things like that. So, you know, nuts to bolts land development is the is the big picture. But you know, there's also, you know, some of the at least now in, in my role kind of getting into the project management and starting to take a step out of the production a little bit and a little bit more into just the day-to-day, you know, are the clients happy? Are the things getting done on schedule? Is our scope creeping, you know, et cetera. So Andrew, you passed your PE exam about a year ago or took it about a year ago. You took the computer-based testing for uh, civil engineering, the water resources segment. We have a lot of engineers that watch our channel here and they want to take the PE exam. They want to pass it. They want to do it on the first time. And I'm just curious, based on now that you're a year out, you've had time to reflect, you went through the whole process of preparing. If you were going back again and starting over and having to prepare to take this exam, what are some of the things that you would have liked to know? Or what can you share with some people that are going to be preparing? For me, it was number one, it was committing, committing to it. I mean, it, it's not a, you know, it's not like going and taking your driver's license exam. It's a pretty thorough exam. And so there's a lot of material to be covered. And I think number one was just committing to it and committing a, a time frame and saying, I'm a number one, schedule the exam here. And then I'm going to give myself three full months of, you know, basically going home every day. And I would really recommend a course. So I utilized the school of PE at the time the, the company was willing to, to pay for it. So, you know, and a lot of companies are for those types of courses. So I use that and basically just every day after work, I'd come home and I do, you know, an hour or two and really just tried to, number one, go back over the material. Um, but I think the, the biggest thing for me that helped me have success on the first try was using the practice exam that's given to you by my NCES. Um, I think, you know, some of the questions, or it really gives a, an accurate, true to form format of, of how the exam is going to be. The number of questions for each section, how they're grouped and how they're oriented. And and so I think use the real practice exam, make that your your real litmus test for how you think you're going to do. And then, you know, from there, take it, what did you do poorly on? And then start focusing on those things. Definitely take the exam, not the week before you're ready to take your exam, you know, and don't be afraid to to get them wrong. You know, it's, it's, it's okay when you're going through the studying part to, you know, to not remember it. And, you know, I think beyond just trying to get the material down, I think, especially with the 
the computer based test get the reference material down. You know, it's 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 gone away from where you can log in, you know, every binder known to man and every resource <laughs> ever, which to me always seemed like you know, I would never be able to do that just because of analysis paralysis and the timing. So I think getting really comfortable with the one book that you get, you know, as part of your CVT. Um, and then, you know, for me, it was like, okay, what's the question and what are the variables? What are they asking for and what section is it? You know, because right. they're really not going to ask you a question that's not in the reference material. So right. I think getting really comfortable with the reference material, being able to identify the, what are they asking me for? You know, and I think too, at the end of the day, if you don't pass it on the first try, it doesn't matter. You know, I think yeah. I've Met and have plenty of, of super high level mentors and engineers who, you know, needed two or three times to pass it. And that doesn't mean anything, you know, at the end of the day. Yeah. So I think it's something that we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to try and, you know, because inevitably, I think most people put a lot of self-worth on, you know, on something like that. How, how proficient am I? Or did I pass or did I fail? And I think just right. understand that, you know, it's not the end of the world and, you know, just keep after it. Eventually you're going to do it. But I would say for those who have struggled with it, definitely don't let one test, you know, keep your license away from you. Because because in my opinion, there was no test that I took in, in college that was, or, or I guess I had a lot harder tests in college than I did taking the PE, I thought, you know? And so if you've gone through engineering school and you've taken all the exams and done it, you can do it. You know, it's just a matter of, like I said, committing to it and, and just knocking it out. That's great. So just five takeaways I take from what you said there. The first one is you got to commit to it, which is important. You got to, you know, because it is a big exam. It's not something you can take later. So you got to commit to it. And, and I found publicly committing it, like letting your supervisor know or something can give you a little extra motivation. The second one, check with your company. Maybe your company will support you financially. I think it's important to find out at least. They may um, support you because it can be expensive if you want to take the exam, take a review course. The third one was to take that review course. You mentioned School of PE. I know they're really great. Um, we have a relationship with them. Um, they do good work. But just having a review course in general, will make sure that you're structured in this sense in your study, you're covering everything you need to study, which is important. The fourth one I took away from you is some good habits. Like you said, you went home every day after work and you studied for a couple hours. I think you got to get yourself in that routine, right? Just like if you go to the gym at night, you got to go multiple times a week or whatever the case may be. So try to come up with some kind of good routine. I always recommend putting it on your calendar too, because we put everything on our calendar. So why not, you know, put our study time on it. And the last thing, the fifth thing I would say, which is, you know, just as important as all the other ones is do that practice exam, right? Do it in a, in kind of a timed exam like setting. Cause to me, you could sit at your kitchen table, sit on your couch all day and study this stuff, but that's not the atmosphere you're going to be in when you're timed. You're up against time with this exam. I mean, a lot of engineers can get a lot of the problems right if you have an unlimited amount of time, but you don't. Um, so I think taking that exam in that test-like conditions and with that reference book that Andrew mentioned that you can know inside and out, that's going to be a great way to sum up all your kind of preparation at the end and make sure that you're kind of ready to go. So Andrew, congrats on getting your PE and thanks for giving some tips here on past the PE exam. We really do appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Good luck to everybody. I hope you found my conversation with Andrew helpful. He gave us some great tips. In upcoming videos, I'll solve some more PE exam practice problems and answer other questions from our subscribers. Past the PE exam videos will be published weekly. So please be sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss something that could make a substantial difference in your PE exam results and ultimately your career. And please ask questions and leave comments below this video and I will respond to you. Let me know if there's a topic you want me to cover or a specific question that you would like answered. Pass the PE exam will have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the PE exam.